you must know who we are. We are here to have, we are here. We came here for asylum. We came here not to be put behind barbed wire. The school was the problem. There were three Jewish boys in the local school. And when Hitler came to power, we were sidelined and we were expelled. It was fairly horrible. All of a sudden, you are sat in a corner and you are ignored, not only by the teachers, also by the pupils. They were warned by their parents, do not have anything to do with Jews. Their father might lose their job. And then they sang horrible, horrible. I mean, you, you just imagine, you're 10 years old, you're sitting there, and they sing in your face a song. Zwei Juden baden in einem Fluss, weil sich ne Sau mal waschen muss. Der eine ist ersoffen, vom anderen roll ist hoffen. Two Jews are bathing in a pool, one drowned, and we hope the other one will drown as well. Now, this is, so you, you, you feel, I mean, it is horrendous, yeah? All of a sudden, things change. That's how it was, but being taken to the train by your parents and saying goodbye, it was, it was very, very sad. You did not know would you ever see them again. This lady took me in, she treated me like a, a son. I was given a room, I was sent to school. Uh, things went, for me, things went very, very well. Obviously, the, the first thing you do, you keep in touch with your parents. When war broke out, all correspondence, all telephone calls with the enemy country stop immediately. So you had no idea, how can I communicate with my parents? This uh, became big trouble for me. As Belgium did not enter the war for the first six weeks, I had an uncle and aunt in Belgium. I wrote to them. They sent the letters to Nuremberg to my mum and dad. They came back Belgium, Glasgow, Glasgow, Belgium, Nuremberg. I did not realize what I was doing. I was corresponding with the enemy, which in wartime is a, a serious offense. I was arrested, taken to the High Court in Edinburgh, and within half an hour by Sir John Strachan, I remember the judge's name, within half an hour I became from a friendly enemy alien, category C, due to religious persecution, I became a dangerous enemy alien, category E. I was angry about it, yes, I mean, I, I was angry. And we came to this country to be free. I was given an hour to pack a little bag, and then I was taken away to the police station. The, uh, being Scotland, the big sergeant said, can it take him? He's under 17, not allowed in a cell. Yeah? So they didn't know what to do with me. Eventually, I was sent to Maryhill Barracks, unfortunately, with 25 German merchant sailors, which was very unpleasant, I can assure you. One called me a dirty Jew, another one knocked him out. Remember, I was, they had no idea what to do with me. A kid who becomes a dangerous enemy alien on paper. It was very bad. We were afraid 2,000 men in Worth Mills, in a filthy cotton mill. We were strip searched. We were given bags to stuff with straw to sleep on the floor. It was bad. We had very little to eat. The worst thing was the loo. First of all, we had one water tap for 60 men, yes? And a bucket for 60 men. And across a trencher was a 
a, a wooden beam where you could sit on and do your ablutions, which was pretty grim. To go to the loo at night, we had to cross a yard, and there were guards outside. I remember one man going out, and the guard shouted, Stop or I'll shoot. He got so fed up. He opened his shovel, just do it. You know, you got, you got tense. The, the British, the officers, and the men from that camp were later on put on trial for real abusing us, and they were cashiered. The idea of being on the Isle of Man, surrounded by barbed wire, and God forbid we lose the war, and Hitler will come. We are there ready behind barbed wire to be shipped off. This was a horrible thought. That's why I said to the authorities, you must know who we are. We are here to have, we are here. We came here for asylum. We came here not to be put behind barbed wire. We are Jewish refugees. We've come to Britain to defeat Hitler. We want to help you to defeat Hitler. Don't treat us as enemies. And eventually things change. When the mail came, he said, it can be sorted out. Or example, this constant roll call, you know, outside your house, five times a day. So we say to them, look, we're in a boarding house with barbed wire around it. We have a dining room. We sit five men to a table. You come inside, they're all at the table. You don't have to get us in and out every day. It would help the soldiers, it would help. So we, we established a relationship with the British army. We were not ill-treated, we, uh, we were sort of self-governing. We started a little a bakery, we cooked, we baked cakes and had coffee afternoons. And The men played chess to pass the time. And there was a lot of theatre, a lot of music. We made a little orchestra. It was remarkable eventually what happened. To me, as a 16-year-old, the camps in the Isle of Man were a university. We had so many doctors and lecturers. I mean, we had people, you know, people 30, 40, 50, German professors, highly educated people. We could have lectures on any subject, from medicine to philosophy. It was fantastic. I got a new roommate during that time. He, he prepared to be a German officer, so I said, German, why a German? His English was absolutely tip-top, so was his German. He was a metallurgist working for the British Aluminium Company in Fort William, and he tried to pump me. He tried to get me drunk. He tried to pump me for information, which I didn't have. I didn't know what it was all about. Ten years later, I wrote to my MP, I said, did they really suspect me of being a spy? He said, yes, we have uh, go to the National Archives. I went to the National Archives. I'm afraid we cannot release that for another 48 years, but I did get it. I was touched by MI5, and they really thought, it is wartime. These letters could be used for illegal purposes, and uh, here we go. I, I think this being above average intelligence, if he's clever, maybe he was used to write illegal things. That's all I can say. From the point of view of the country, you have to look at espionage very seriously. Even a kid, yes, his letters can be used by somebody else. So I, I cannot blame them for that, that they did that. That's just, it went a bit over the top, but that's how it was. These things happened to me, and I, I just took them as they came. It's traumatic, but I think I look at things, and if I can do them, I simply accept it and do the best I can. To try to overcome the sad parts of it, the traumatic parts of it, I'll just get on with it. You've, you've been taken in here. You, you, you came as a refugee with, with 10 shillings in your pocket. You were given an opportunity to work and you, there was no, no anti-Semitism or anti-German. If you did the right things, you were accepted. So you feel you ought to give something back to the community that took you in, yes? And which 
It's the right thing to do.